City officials, in particular the mayor of Sacramento and the police chief, have been the focus of much of the public's outrage. Hari Srinivasan has that perspective. Daryl Steinberg has been the mayor of Sacramento since 2016. He joins me now. Uh, mayor Steinberg, first, just to, to address the concern uh, that Mr. Crump just had. Why the different narratives uh, so soon, soon after the shooting? Well, uh, the investigation is uh, just beginning here. And, you know, I know sometimes uh, in the moments and days after a horrific event like this, there's a lot of information that, uh, that gets out that, that uh, may or may not be the case. But I want to tell you that um, we are not going to wait until the end of the investigation here in Sacramento to do a thorough review of the policies, the protocols, and the training. It's one thing uh, to uh, not prejudge whether or not these officers acted within the scope of the policy, uh, the law, and the training. But it's a whole other thing to ask whether or not the protocols and the trainings themselves need to be corrected. And we're going to be very, very aggressive about this because regardless of whether or not uh, there was legal, will be legal culpability here, the outcome was just plain wrong. A 22-year-old young man like this should not have lost his life in this way. And so uh, we are yep. going to be diligent. Yes. Well, Mayor Steinberg, uh, with respect, unfortunately, this is not a new occurrence. There are cities around the country that have tackled this, that have tried to figure out what sorts of policy prescriptions that they could make to recover and maybe prevent this from happening again. So what's taken Sacramento so long? Well, Sacramento is actually in some ways on the forefront. We have one of the most progressive video release policies in the country. Our chief released this video within three days of the shooting. A year and a half ago, our policy and the policies throughout the country are rarely, if ever, to release video. We're one of the first cities to have all of our officers actually equipped with body cams. And so mm -hmm. uh, we, have a lot, we have a lot more work to do. There's no question about it. I mean, certainly the question is, is there not a better way? And the answer has to be, yes, there has to be a better way. And, and the better way is around de-escalation. It's sure. around uh, le less lethal force. Of course it is. But, uh, and that's exactly what we're going to pursue. Mr. Mayor, if it wasn't for the death of uh, Joseph Mann in that case two years ago, you wouldn't have had this body cam video release policy. I, I know this is an ongoing investigation, but why did the officers in this particular case press the mute button on those cameras? And why can't we hear what's on that tape? I don't know. Uh, certainly there's a lot of audio that you can hear, but uh, it was turned off at some time. And that's a question that I have, that the community has, and will be answered in the investigation. Certainly the, the question we'll be asking at our, our next public hearing is simply, is it ever appropriate to mute a body cam? If the answer to that question is no, I think we'll already have the answer. But um, we're going to ask that question, certainly, is one of the key troubling aspects of the case. Mayor, you've also said that you don't believe your police are racist, but you do think that implicit bias might have played a role in this. So are you willing to implement implicit bias training for your officers like, say, Indianapolis did after uh, the shooting that they had of Aaron Bailey last year? We're already starting, and absolutely, uh, we are going, we must intensify our implicit bias training because, uh, look, at here's what I know. I have a 21-year-old son. Um, I never would have thought of having to tell him as a teenager to keep his hands in the 10-2 driving position if he were approached by a police, or stopped by a police officer while driving his car. That is what African-American mom and dads have to do uh, with their kids. And, it, and from all strata of society, I hear this from everybody, implicit bias, of course, is real. And to deny it is to not do everything we have to do to prevent this from happening. Oh, finally, Mayor Steinberg, um, you know, you had a 10-year-old kid testify at City Hall that he was scared of police. He was pointing to this case in tears and saying 20 shots over a cell phone. How do you deal with kind of that deep-seated problem? You take this moment and you turn it into a movement. You, you take the anguish, the trauma, and the pain and you make real change. Sacramento has a, has a wonderful civic culture. And if there's any city yep. that could turn this horrific event into permanent and real change, it's the capital city of California. And that's exactly what we intend to do. All right. Mayor Daryl Steinberg of Sacramento, thanks so much. Thank you.